Yeah. Hi, Bernard. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Carsten. How are you? Good. Thank you. So this is the introduction preparation video of our series. Uh, but first, we should introduce ourselves or not? Yeah. Go ahead, please. Oh, me? <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> I'm Carsten Rachfall from Germany, as you may hear. I'm a Microsoft MVP for, I think, 12 years now, hoping for my 13th award. We'll see. Um, and uh, I do a lot of storage bases direct and Azure Stack HCI. And this is, I think, uh, the topic of our video series. What are you doing, Bernard? Well, I work for Microsoft, as you could see here in uh, in the subtitle or uh, below my name. My name is Bernard Frank. I'm uh, a customer engineer in the fast track team here at Microsoft, helping customers on Azure Stack HCI. That's cool. What I do. Cool. So let's see. We have prepared uh, some slides to um, yeah. tell the people what what we will show in the following. Yeah. Many, many, many videos, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe we should talk a little bit about the motivation for this video. Uh, what is the purpose of it? What we think is is might be useful for you, right? Um, the name it says it's an installation series. So we take it from a bare from the bare metal. We try to show you everything, you know, from setting up the hardware. Uh, until you have a full working cluster. Also, we plan to put on some workload um, and some hybrid services, maybe like Azure Kubernetes services uh, on top of Azure Stack HCI. Uh, and this one is really something that is meant for the admins, for the people that are implementing that stuff um, as a sort of repository, some sort of best practices, right? Or if you just want to see how uh, are things done or how if or, or how things could be done, right? Mm -hmm. And why do we think we are the right persons for this? <laughs> well, um, you do. You, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm. A, you are in the, <laughs> in the fast track team. For, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm trying to be. Your, uh, humble on this one right so um i think we have you know we have seen quite a few installations uh you maybe more than i did because i'm relatively new to the fast track team but uh, it is one of them uh, it is one of my main topics that i care of um and i do have customers that i'm following with and that i'm helping with um and you know this is some sort of best practices what i've learned uh, my lessons learned and i think you also have a lot of lessons learned uh, during your journey with um with uh, hyper v storage spaces direct and azure stack hci yes. um so i think um yeah uh, we, we are the right person. <laughs> we don't know all of it, right? Things change and things are constantly changing. But um, yeah, the, what we know, we can share. Um, okay. So then let's uh, dive into the introduction. Yes. Uh, so, um, you know, we talked about ourselves, about the motivation. So let's maybe, uh, you know, introduce a little bit the hardware that we are playing with. It's your hardware, right? Um, maybe, and therefore you are probably the one that can tell a little bit more about it. Um, as we see here, it's a four node system, right? Um, so who did you buy this from? Or, you know, <laughs> is it something that, um, I mean, people can see it from on the right hand side of this picture, right? So there's a label yeah. of the uh, of the window there. So what is yeah. it? So this, these are four uh... Asus servers. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought them from Thomas Kren, mm -hmm. uh, but I have also hardware from Data On. Uh, I had until recently hardware from Dell. <laughs> I have some hardware from Lenovo. Mm -hmm. So this is only an example because it's the newest hardware I have and uh, it's a four node cluster, all NVMEs. We will talk about that a little bit later. And we also have some GPUs in there. So if we have time next year, maybe we can do a series about AVD or uh, um, GPU support in Azure Stack HCI. Mm -hmm. So the systems have half a terabyte of RAM mm -hmm. um, for 1.6 terabyte NV, no, six 1.6 mm -hmm. uh, terabyte NVMEs. Um, so it's it's a nice um, scenario to do demonstrations with. And when I do courses, I have an Azure Stack HCI course, a Storage Spaces Direct course. I host, uh, let's say, participant uh, VMs on there where everybody can play with it. So it's not a production environment. It's mm -hmm. uh, here to 
play with it because I do a lot of uh, Azure Stack HCI and storage spaces direct installations with my company, uh, with a colleague of mine. It's our our main um, main uh, work we do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and it's an AMD system. I, I always wanted to have an AMD system. So far, I had only Intel hardware and uh, I, I can say it's nice and it's the same. Okay, <laughs> no, good. Um, so, I mean, you did the assemblation or the design or the setup of that hardware, meaning you, ch you have chosen uh, the components uh, to be in that system, right? So the NVMEs that it is Kioxias or the, the network adapters that we'll just see in a second. Um, please note for the audience, I mean, there are systems out there that you can buy from the bigger vendors, uh, which are sort of integrated nodes. Uh, that means they are validated. They have um, support people talking to our support people. They are doing tests. Um, so you would be able to find these, um, these integrated systems, um, the benefit of those um, you know, every component that you get there uh, is fully certified. Whereas on your system, you need to have a little bit of knowledge or, you know, like a big piece of knowledge uh, not to buy the wrong components, right? Yeah, but I would say we have we have two uh, kinds of Microsoft certifications for mm -hmm. Azure Stack HCI. You mentioned the integrated systems. That's right. the best certification where everything is tested together. And uh, the vendors even have a presentation at Microsoft and Redmond. And also the hardware is at Redmond. That's always mm -hmm. the best uh, you can do. But there are only three or four vendors who have integrated systems. And there are many others who have validated nodes. Uh, mm -hmm. They are also certified for Azure Stack HCI, um, but you have much more possibilities what you can do. Uh, these are uh, validated nodes from Thomas Kren. Right. They have validated them and they are supported with Azure Stack HCI. But let's go on mm -hmm. here yeah. because otherwise our first video is already an hour, right? And <laughs> okay. we want to do short videos. <laughs> Got it, got it, got it. So let's jump into the network setup, right? Because networking is a critical piece of our setup here um, and that you better understand which kind of network settings we have um, and how, uh, how our servers are equipped. Uh, here's a, a little graph um, that shows the server from the back or one node from the back. Um, and basically we start out with having one uh, base management board or, or the controller card you know, uh, which gives you access uh, to the BMC so that you can remote into the uh, console of that system and do the um, OS install, right? So that's mm -hmm. one gigabit port. Yeah, uh, before we go on with the network design, uh, there are many possibilities how you can uh, design an Azure Stack HCI network. There is mm -hmm. fully converged where you do everything of your traffic over two cards or four cards that are in one uh, set switch. Uh, there are other designs and here we have seven network ports and uh, we try to leverage them as best as we can. So this is not the only design, but this is a design I like very much. And uh, uh, we will now talk about the different points. So the BMC you have already. So what's, mm -hmm. what else is there? Yeah, let's move to the other two ports here on the right, uh, which is uh, also one gigabit ports. Uh, and there you do have an Intel card for doing that. So that's just for the management traffic that I understood, right? Um, and the nice thing about it is um, for redundancy reasons, you are putting these two together, right? Yeah, um, the management network is very important in Azure Stack HCI. Um, you have the connection to the domain, for example. Um, the Azure Stack HCI nodes have to contact Azure. So that's always an external communication. Um, and I like to have a separate network for management for, for this kind of traffic, if it's possible. So here we have two one gigabit adapters. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's imagine you have a problem with a node and you want to get your workload off with a live migration. Mm -hmm. So that you can do a live migration, you need a certificate from the Active Directory. So if you if we only have one management card and one, one management card would be connected to one switch, and if we have a problem there, we can't evacuate, uh, how we call it, we can't move the VMs from the host. So I mm. 
prefer to have it connected to two switches and uh, do a team for uh, for the two cards. So the system only see w sees one management NIC. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, the legacy teaming adapter, the LBFO team, is not supported in Azure Stack HCI anymore. It's still supported in Windows Server, but not in Azure Stack HCI. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a set switch and use that for um, um, giving us the redundancy of a team. So we will do with a two, uh, one gigabit adapter uh, uh, a mm -hmm. virtual switch. And there we have a virtual adapter called management here or MGMT. You know? mm -hmm. okay. It's not for virtual machines. It's just for the purpose yeah. to get redundancy for our management interface. So what, what else do we have? Yeah, you mentioned virtual machines, and this is uh, the this switch for right. So we do have a compute switch, um, also a set switch um, that is connected to the two ports from the uh, uh, from the Mellanox ConnectX5 card, which are 25G, right? So um, an uprise in uh, throughput, as you um, as you could imagine, because we may host uh, multiple virtual machines that need uh, forever uh, what they do, right? They they need connectivity to the outside world, and that might also include you know a high bandwidth connection. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, you dedicated the 25G ports. Um, to this, right? Exactly. Okay. So, and then we have two more mm -hmm. ports. Yes, these are these guys here, uh, the bigger ones. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, bigger size uh, in, in, in the plug means a bigger throughput. So uh... <laughs> bigger bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a dual port 100 gigabit adapter. And a fun fact, uh, this is a, a Mellanox ConnectX 5 card, a PCI Express 4 card. I have these cards for three to four years already, let's say three years, mm -hmm. but I never had a system that had PCI Express 4. And with PCI Express 3, you have only eight gigabit, only eight gigabits per lane. This is a 16 lane card. And if you multiply 16 by eight, you have, you get 128 gigabit. So how could you do two times 100 gigabit over a 128 gigabit bus? It's not possible. So I was very excited to get AMD systems with PCI Express 4, but unfortunately <laughs> I have only one CPU. And so I have the problem with the memory bandwidth. I can't leverage 200 gigabits here. Now, mm. If it would be a two processor system, maybe I could, but uh, not. But this is how we call it. Uh, I'm, I'm complaining on a very high level here. Yeah? Oh, so, uh, poor you. Uh, poor me, yes. Yeah, uh, so this is okay. a design I really like, but this is mm. not the only design that I mentioned. We, we also could uh, do the management uh, virtual adaptive adapter on the compute switch and not use it to one gigabit adapters. But I like if we have still one gigabit there, I like to have it separated, separate separate mm -hmm. um, because in the cluster we have some fun functionality like the heartbeat. I, I like to have the heartbeat over different switch infrastructures. And we will talk about that when we are mm -hmm. in the cluster uh, uh, videos, right? Yeah. So this is a setup. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you said, I mean, uh, if you are buying integrated systems, sometimes you don't have the chance to um, to 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 add so many other ports, uh, or you are buying special hardware that is smaller in size, where you don't have the space to to get that in. For example, for for the retail stores. Um, so um, sometimes you need to do it differently. But the beauty of this design is, I think, you know, the code lines that we have prepared. Or you can use them for uh, for adjusting it to your to your environment, right? Okay, so let's uh, jump next. I mean, because we need to obviously we do we do have different network uh, different network cards, different network ports. Um, that was the uh, physical representation of it before in the previous slides. Now we need to do it maybe a little bit more on the logic side of things, right? Uh, so we do have different traffic classes uh, here. I'm trying to sort of giving you, you know, an idea on which IP address range we are using for. Uh, therefore, um, 
is this uh, is this PowerPoint slide. So we do have four nodes. Each node, you know, gets an individual uh, IP address uh, suffix, if you will. So the dot fifty one, dot fifty two uh, to dot fifty four. Uh, the management network uses a VLAN. Um, it is on a, a class C network uh, with the IP address range at the bottom there, right? Yeah. So the I name my hosts like mm -hmm. the vendor. So this is Toka Air, a Toka. Right. It's called for Thomas Gren. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I can't. Uh, I'm a little bit older. So you have so much difference. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> bit oh man. Or we have oh. a bit hardware. Um, <laughs> So I just called the nodes to HCI one, two, four. And mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, uh, I like to have in all the networks that my uh, nodes have mm. the same end octet. Right. So here the 51 in every network we have the 51 is for the first node. So in management, you mentioned already that the 192.168.209.5.1. The first note and the subnet mask is a little bit incorrect here. It's a 23, not a 24. Right. Otherwise, people will say, "How could they reach the gateway?" and so on. But uh, right, it's right. a minor, minor little uh, thing. So then we have our compute network, our compute traffic. You mentioned it. Mm -hmm. These are the two 25 gigabit uh, network adapters with mm -hmm. the set switch for the VMs. Yeah? And there we could have different networks. So we use VLAN tagging here. To 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 design it a bit a bit harder. We will we will see why it's a bit harder if you have especially a VLAN tag on the management network. Uh -huh. So okay. what else do we have? Yeah, going up, you know, the space um, is is filled with the storage uh, with the storage traffic, uh, right? So we are talking of uh, a hyperconverged system here. That means you have the disks in each individual node. In order to get redundancy, the storage uh, will replicate every write, for example, to the other node nodes as well for redundancy reasons. And that is happening via a high-speed high network, which is uh, the green line here. And as for, is, for its importance, um, we use two uh, high-speed uh, networks here, which are separated from each other, at least from the IP address ranging, right? <laughs> yes, I use the same VLAN tag for both mm -hmm. networks. And sometimes network guy sa says, oh, no, if you have a subnet, you need another VLAN. Mm. No, you do not. Uh, I, I know many, many companies do that, subnet equals VLAN, but you can also have multiple subnets in the same VLAN. And uh, I did that here. If you like to separate uh, subnets as VLANs, you can easily put yeah. the 813 here. But it's not, uh, is it not, it's not like I set it up. Yeah? Uh -huh. yep. Okay, let's go on because time is... Uh... Yeah, um, so is that it? No, it's not all. So we introduced one node, right? Uh, we also gave you some ideas about, you know, the, uh, the physical layout of one node. However, we need to have some additional hardware, which is our uh, our switches uh, that we have here. So first of all, we also do have the uh, the switches for the one gigabit lanes, right? Um, and then we do have um, two switches for taking uh, the other traffic right uh, the high speed traffic so um yeah in order i uh, yeah please bear with me i don't draw lines now i don't have it animated because <laughs> it could be a little bit crowded uh so let's do that just for one node right um and now you can see me sweat or um because i'm trying to do that live right um so let's just get maybe from the importance kind of thing first to uh, connect the storage uh, the storage ones right so i will try to connect this adapter here and the other for maybe for redundancy reasons take uh, that port over here right happy with that carsten i'm very happy so yeah. we have our 100 gigabit melanox switches now nvidia mm -hmm. um, they have 16 100 gig ports um, and uh, bernard will next connect the 25 gigabit adapters so for that there is a cable where you on one end have a 100 gigabit port and on the other end four 25 gigabit ports um, 
So, uh, so you can also connect 25, 50, 100, 10 gigabit to the switch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and now we have the gigabit adapters. They are connected to Ubiquiti switches. Uh, I have for the other stuff here, Ubiquiti, and some of you would say that is not enterprise grade. Uh, I agree, but uh, we are uh, a company with a lot of hardware, but here I don't use Cisco or Aruba or whatever switches. I have uh, Ubiquiti because it's much easier to manage with Wi-Fi, with internet and so on. So we have the one gigabit adapters connected to the Ubiquiti switch and the BMC is not redundant. It's connected to one switch. Yeah? Okay. Normally we don't use the BMC only if we install the stuff. So this is the layout um, and the Mellanox switches are also integrated, so meshed with the uh, Ubiquiti uh, hardware. So I can, uh, the VMs that are connected over the 25 gigabit adapters to the uh, Mellanox switches, mm -hmm. they also, uh, the VLANs are presented also in the Ubiquiti environment. So we have it for everything. Okay, okay. so okay. this is, um, this is a real design uh, as you can find it as a, at a customer. Um, and I like this design very much. Uh, we, we don't have too much network cards. We have uh, good redundancy, yeah? mm -hmm. um, but you also, we could also do everything over the Mellanox switches, but that's not my preferred design if I can avoid it. Okay. Well, that we do maybe a separate webinar to explain that it's, it's, it takes maybe half an hour or an hour to talk about that stuff. Yeah, well, right. Uh, but uh, as you would say, these switches are interconnected, right? Um, yes. Yeah. In order to, you know, to, um, because we do have multiple nodes talking there, we don't, you know, always plug in the right cards to the right uh, server, or at least we also have crosstalk with the virtual machines, uh, hence we need to, um, we need to uh, interconnect these ones. Okay, good. I think that is it from the uh, from the PowerPoints that we had. Um, so now we are jumping in into uh, a series of videos. Uh, and I think in the next video, uh, we are installing the operating system uh, using a bootstick. So stay tuned. Um, see you in the next video.